Hi, everyone. I see a lot of people trickling in, so I'll give it a couple of moments while people are connecting. Welcome to Impress Arts Mandala class. So uh, cheers to our Mandala Monday crew who followed us over. It's Thursday, but we're doing mandalas today. If you're not shy, we would love to see your lovely faces, Donna and Lisa. Thank you for turning on to your camera. Um, we love seeing your lovely faces. And if you want to stamp with us, um, please feel free. I'm Jen. I am the marketing director here at Impress Arts. So anything that you see with um, any copy points, um, social media, uh, Rita's step-by-step uh, -step tutorials are written by me. I'm here with our lovely Joanne. Uh, she handles our digital marketing. And she's also been on our Facebook Lives recently. So any, any anyone who's watched us on Facebook Live, this is a lovely Joanne behind the screen. Hi, everyone. So I'll be here with her today, probably a little bit on mute, just so I can train her uh, to take over these classes so I have more time to do other fun stuff for you guys. Um, oh, hi, Lynn. Hi, Lisa. Um, so in the chat room, you'll see um, while we're tuning in and having Rita set up, just let us know who you are and where you're stamping from um, just to get the class started. So I'm gonna throw it over to Rita really quick while she um, can introduce herself as well as the class because um, we're making a fun mandala summer piece with you and we'll get this class going. Hi, Lynn. Hi, guys. Well, it's nice to see all of you. I see Donna, Lisa, I see a bunch of people. Hi, Brenda, Linda Marie. So today we are doing Mandala Thursday. I know a lot of you join us for Mandala Mondays when we used to have it, um, but we're gonna do it today, which is Thursday and it's almost Friday. So this is a good thing. Um, we're gonna work with Copper today. If this is, you put on makeup, Linda, just for me. <laughs> That's my because when I when I logged on, I was like, I'm not gonna do makeup today. And then I realized how bad I looked, <laughs> ran up really quick to put some on. But um, we are gonna work with copper today. Now for you beginners, if you want to start with maybe an aluminum or an alchemy, um, that's a good choice of metals to use. Because like I said, it's always, you know, um, brass and copper are harder metals. So if this is a new skill that you want to pick up or you've been stamping for a while and you've always wanted to try mandalas and that's why you're here, I do suggest starting on a piece of aluminum or alchemy first or softer metals. So I'm going to kick it back to Jen while I get all set up. But I just want to remind you that we do have Facebook Lives on Tuesdays at 1230 Eastern Standard Time. And we also have this very secretive, amazing Facebook group. So if you have not joined it yet, please do so. And Jen will tell you and Joanne will tell you a little bit more about that while I get my block all set up. So hey guys, so Rita stole my thunder about Facebook Lives, but yes, Sorry. it's okay. We do do Facebook Lives every Thursday at 12.30 Eastern Standard Time. Uh, Rita will be obviously stamping the piece and either I or Joanne will be answering your questions and plugging in those links of products Rita is using. Um, we definitely do some fun things. We launch new products um, on Facebook Lives. We showcase them. Rita mentioned that secret Facebook group. It's our Facebook group for our amazing community of makers. Um, you guys inspire us and we love seeing your work. And it's our way to like connect with you more one-on-one -on -one and see those work that you may not want to post on your personal pages, um, but it's kind of hidden. So maybe you don't want to see your friends and family to see it, but you want to share it with the world. Um, so we will write, we'll put that link in the comments like during the class so you can join the Facebook group. And then make sure to answer the questions. Oh yes, so Joanne is letting people into the group and we have three questions. So if you wanna join the group, please answer them. They're very simple. We just wanna know if you do it as a hobby, if you sell, um, if you're- I'm like gonna a, be, you're a crafter. Like we just wanna know what you do on the side. Yeah, um, and that's gonna help us like direct the group into the right um, direction, whether we're um, providing selling content, um, inspiration content, new product, um, 
In this group, you guys are the first to know about everything. So we do launch things to you first before we actually launch it to other people. So that's exciting. Um, and then during this time, um, if you have any questions, feel free to chat them in the chat uh, room in this uh, meeting. Um, Rito does a really good job at reading them and answering them on the spot. If not, I'll kind of like announce to her live the question. Um, and I'll also plug in the answer in the chat room and the links that Rita is using of the products. Um, if I don't get to the question or we don't see it, uh, please don't get offended. Um, please reach out to us on social media with a direct message. And I, myself, Rita or Joanne will actually answer the question um, to you. And yeah, Joanne's a little shy. Uh, this is my first time actually like doing <laughs> something with them three. Like, yeah. like, no, they will I, love you, Joanne. Joanne yeah, is one of my favorite people. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I'm the one, I'm good with emojis and typing. I'm not good talking. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so without further ado, I don't want to waste your time because we're our 10 minutes into the class. I'm going to throw it back to Rita because mandalas do take a little bit of time to make. So okay. happy stamp, you guys, and have a fun class. I'm scrolling through everybody. I see Roseanne Zito. Hi, Roseanne. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's not in the, the garage, right? You stamped in the garage? Like? No, she's nope. in a room with a really nice metal scroll behind her. I oh, love that wall hanging. I'm Roseanne. almost stamping in front and of her. And there's Angela. Look at all you. Hello. So, okay, so I'll stop stalking because I'm going through and I'm going through. All right, so let's get started. So like I said, we're going to do a mandala project today and I'm going to do it in copper. Um, if you are a beginner, please help yourself to any blank that you might have soft metal wise, alchemy, aluminum. All right, those are the silver discs from Impress Art. Um, keep in mind that when you're stamping on your brass and your copper, you're going to have to hit a little bit harder and utilize your tilt and tap technique, which we'll get into after, um, when we start stamping. Okay. So I am using, let's see, Linda Heard. Did you anneal? No, I never anneal my copper before I start with the impress art stamps. All right. Um, I'm not, I, I don't anneal unless I'm working with maybe like a 12 gauge, um, 10 gauge uh, copper. All right. So right out of the package come my blanks and they're actually, they've been in my bead boxes, my little boxes. So they're a little, um, they're a little tarnished, but a little bit of elbow grease and that should sign that right up. So what I'm going to take out is a buffing block. All right. So for this project, you're going to need your blank, your blanks, your copper, your brass, um, your aluminum, or your alchemy rounds. Okay, you're going to need your stamp guide book. We're going to utilize the clear mandala sticker in that in that book. Um, you're going to need your buffing block. If you don't have this, it's not a big deal. You could always get it at a later date. <clears throat> I'm going to use the green patina today. All right. Um, a Sharpie marker just to mark my holes, deer skin leather, some jump rings, a head pin, the beads of your choice, and last but not least, your Southwest Mandala pattern. All right, and there you go. So we are going to begin. Um, what I like to do is I always like to work with my center first. Now I like to work with the disc without holes in it. If you have a hole in your disc, that's perfectly fine. All right, I find that with my mandalas, I like to stamp my pattern and then decide where I'm putting my holes. Um, but it's really personal preference. So I'm gonna come in in my sticker guidebook and I'm gonna pull out my clear sticker grid. All right, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna follow the curvature of my blank and line it up with my sticker guide. So I'm gonna place it on my block. I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna follow the circles on my sticker guide that match with my blank. It might take me a little bit today. There we go. All right, so you see that the outside black circle 
is what is going to go around my desk. Now, if you're gonna work with a one inch desk, you're gonna obviously follow the smaller circles. So, so you know, you're gonna use your black circles to line up and that's gonna line up with your cross and your center. So after that, I'm just going to fix it to my block. Now, some people like to draw out a mandala pattern before, okay, before they start. You could do that. You can basically um, just follow your lines, totally up to you. What I like to do is I like to take one of my stickers and if you have a dry erase marker handy, or sometimes if you're lucky enough, you could use your enamel marker, okay? And what I like to do is I like to draw my pattern beforehand. So I'm gonna show you how I do that. So I know I'm gonna come in with my center, which is right there. And then I know I'm gonna come in with my flourishes. So I utilize my lines. And then I know I want my stepped out pattern here and I draw on my sticker. Now you could choose to draw on a random sticker. You could draw, choose to draw on a piece of paper. You can draw on your sticker guide. I feel that um, when I start drawing on my sticker guide that's on my blank, it kind of gets a lot like really messy. So I like to just either draw it on a piece of paper or I like to um, draw it on a marker. And then with your enamel marker or a dry erase marker, it literally comes right off. See that? So that's a little tip and trick of mine. All right, Jen, you've never seen that one before, huh? No, I haven't. <laughs> I see it's really good with the on the spot. You come up with things that work. <laughs> I, learned I was thinking about every... this last night, how I can make it easier for everybody to understand. So I'm going to start from with... you every single day, every day <laughs> <laughs> with my center. Okay. So again, you could take your enamel marker and use it. If you use a Sharpie marker on here, just know ladies and gentlemen, that is not gonna come off. All right, so you could better see where I'm going with this pattern. I am going to just mark my center, okay? I'm gonna come in. Now, Jen names these designs, all these amazing names. Jen, do you remember what you named this one? I didn't because I think I named them and then found out they were already named. Uh, but oh. I call that one. That one's just the diamond. I'm pretty sure, but I can oh, find out okay. the real so name though. I call it a bullseye. Jen okay. calls it a diamond. So that little diamond bullseye that you have. So this is your three millimeter uh, stamp in your pack. I always like to start this mandala pattern with a center, and this is what I use as my center. So I'm going to come in. All right. And I always like to mark my stamps. And I'll tell you why I like to mark my stamps. Because, you know, we always say at Impress Art, as long as the Impress Art's butt facing you, you're stamping in the right direction. But with mandalas, that kind of goes out the window. So what I like to do with my patterns is I just like to mark the center of every side. So if I choose to turn it a different way, I know where my center is. Why well, did it come up for stuff? So All right. So we're going to start with that. I'm going to come in. And I'm going to place it on my dot. Now I'm placing it on my dot, but I'm also seeing that that line that runs straight down my disc is going to line up with my black center line. So I'm going to bring this down, line that up. And if you could see that your black line is met up with your orange. Even if you take a look at all sides, your center lines on each part of your shank should be lined up with your cross line down the middle. All right, so again, I'm gonna come in. And give it a nice hit. And that's gonna mark the center of my pattern. Okay, then I'm just gonna follow the outskirts of it. If you're having, I'm just gonna troubleshoot this really quick. If you're having an issue with getting a full impression into your metal, you might wanna try to tilt and tap it. And let me grab a piece just to show you what I mean. All right, I'm just gonna use this right up here. 
I'm going to pull this back a little bit more. All right. So your tilt and tap. You want to make sure that your hand is anchored. Your, your shank is straight up and down. You're not tilted anyway. Okay. You're going to come in with your hammer. Give it a nice hit at top as the stamp goes flow, flow, flowing. You're going to bring it back. And that's going to so you have a really nice and even impression in your metal. Does everybody see that? So we'll do it again without it going flying out of my hand. Hit it once, bring it back to it. Now, I'm not lifting it completely off the metal when I'm tilting and tapping it. I'm slightly angling it to each side. Okay, so the stamp is in actuality, it is moving, but it's not coming completely off your metal piece. Okay, and that's gonna make sure that you have a nice and even impression in your metal. Now you'll notice that if you're stamping on, red, on brass and then you go to the brass, uh, the copper, and you go to the copper with your sticker on it, you're gonna have to stamp it a little bit harder. All right, so be a little bit more aggressive with your hits. So now I'm gonna come in. Should be a Monday. I'm literally dropping things every two seconds. So I'm going to come in and I've only used this set once before. So I'm going to just mark my centers, all right, on each side. And I'm now going to branch out from the sides of my diamond. So feel free to move your block as you're doing this. Now I want that center line to line up with the bullseye in the center of my disc. All right, so I'm gonna, the tip of your stamp on the bottom is gonna cover that last stamped impression a little bit, okay? Just like that. Then I'm gonna turn again. Now, I don't want you to look at your sticker and think, oh my God, it's all jumbled up. It looks like a mess. You cannot tell what your stamped impressions look like until you pull your sticker off your blank, okay? Because what happens is as you're forging into the metal, that plastic is spreading, that sits on top, that sticker just starts to spread and it kind of doesn't look great, okay? So don't judge your stamping by your sticker. There we go. And then I'm gonna to start to use the lines around my guide. So I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna use my stepped out pattern, okay? And I'm going to mark my center. And now these are gonna sit on the First circle outside of stamped impression in the center. Okay. So, and I want my that top step to face inward. Now, before what I told you that we always go by impress art facing you, we're going to flip that around because I want that stepped out pattern towards me. So, I'm going to come in now and I'm going to put that. on each side of the bullseye and the flourish. So around that first black circle is where my stepped out pattern is gonna lay. So I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna line up my center line with that dot or on that line. So it looks just like that. I'm gonna turn my block. 
do the same thing, make sure that my line is lined up right to that corresponding dot. Little tilt and tap, okay? And I'm gonna come around. And do the same for the next two. Rita, they're memor memor memorized um, by fun? your mandala patterns. Everyone's so quiet. <laughs> I, I know. That, that well, these classes usually are quiet because everybody's either taking notes or they're looking. I know. I see a couple of people who look like they're taking notes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So then I'm going to come in, and I don't like the empty space in between my sept pattern. So I'm going to come back in um, with my bullseye, diamond bullseye stamp, and I'm going to take my marker again, and I'm just going to make one little dot in between my step out. I'm gonna come in, give it a nice hit. If you can get it on the first hit, great. If you can't, please utilize that tilt and tap. Now there's no wrong way to design your mandala. Your mandala is your pattern, okay? It doesn't have to be the same as everyone else. You could totally go rogue and not even, you know, follow a pattern. Do any design that you want to, all right? And then off of my bullseye, I want to use my flourish, which is this one right here. So I'm gonna come back in and at that tip of that flourish, I'm gonna put another dot. I'm at the tip of that bullseye, I'm gonna put another dot. And that's where my flourish is gonna go. So I'm gonna come in right there. All right, so then I have my flourish, I have my stepped out pattern, I have my bullseye, my flourish right on top. So I'm literally following the lines alongside of that sticker guide. All right, and I know it's very hard to see it this way. So our next step is, I have a lot of negative space in between. I'm gonna use what I like to call my eyelash stamp, which is this one right here. All right, or sun rays. I think they were like sun rays or something, Jen. I'm not sure what it says on the packaging or not. I'll tell you in two seconds. We oh. had, yes, let me see. Sun rays, right? Uh, uh, the diamond is really the shaman's eye. Oh, that's what it was, that the shaman's the, eye. The step pattern is what it's called, but I call it a staircase. <laughs> then you have the sun symbol, that's the sun symbol. This is the sun symbol. We got very fancy with this mandala pack. <laughs> well, it's called a Southwestern mandala. So I guess they went on a, a certain theme. I, I'm guessing. It was before my time. <laughs> oh, was it before? I forgot who it was with me. I'm not sure. So then I'm gonna, again, I'm gonna use not this first black circle, the second one, okay? And I'm gonna come in between and I'm gonna place my dot. Just like that. All right, do you see them in between? And that is where I'm gonna line up my sun rays. Sun rays, sun, sun stamp. So I'm gonna come in, make sure that my center line is on that dot. There we go.
And now I have that. I'm going to come back in with my dot. What are these? John? I forgot what these are called. They have a dot. They're like a series of dots. Series of dots. Now, if there's something that you want to bring in, another element, let's say there is a stamp that you want to bring in outside of your mandala pack, you can do that. You could use design stamps. Um, it's pretty much whatever you like. You don't need a mandala pack to do a circular pattern. You can use the design stamps in your letter sets. You could use any design stamps that you have. All right, you could actually do a mandala using your texture. All right, so basically if you are using your texture, I would go around the outside with the texture, maybe skip a couple of lines and follow that grid on the inside. So it's just a repetitious pattern, all right? So I think I'm really happy with that. I'm gonna leave that alone, okay? Now we're gonna pull our sticker off. All right, and you could get a little bit more detailed in your pattern. I like the simplicity of this. You're also gonna find that when you pull your sticker off, you're gonna have remnants in your impressions. So what I like to do is I like to use a tweezer. You can um, use a bead reamer. You can use a head pin. I am gonna utilize a head pin. And you see how it comes out, super easy. You know, you don't want to be aggressive with it because you definitely don't want to scratch your metal. All right. But you want to make sure that your sticker is out of your stamped impressions because you want to make sure that your enamel is going to sit nicely in those stamped impressions. Would you recommend like a tweezer or like a toothpick? Um, you could do a toothpick, you could do a tweezer, you could do a bead reamer, like an all, um, you know, just, just be careful. Cause even your wood, even though like wood is non-marring, it will still scratch your metal. So this is definitely um, a part where you want to be careful with what you choose and how you, um, how you pull your sticker out. So I'm literally just going very lightly around it. And you'll see that it starts to move. Once it moves, you know, you take your fingernail and just move it away. You could take a polish cloth, polish pad also to it to um, loosen them up. But definitely you're going to need something with a sharp edge to pull your sticker out. All right, so I'm just gonna, and you could see like you could probably, if you have sticky on your head pin, um, it'll just peel it off as well. Any questions so far, Jen? No, they're very really quiet, but Linda uh, Mitchell said she watches first and then stamps later. Oh, okay. <laughs> but we do see a lot of our, um, or not a lot, some of our Facebook members um, in this class. Well, thank you for joining us, ladies. All right, so I think I pretty much got that all done. I like to come in now and I just like to use my buffing box to just shine it up a little bit, to take a look at it, see if I need to come back in with my stamps maybe because maybe I didn't hit them hard enough and I don't have full impressions. I'm going to show you how you could correct that. All right, so I'm just literally going in the same direction with the super fine side. All right, and that that takes a lot of the um, stickiness off of it. If your sticker is leaving a residue, which sometimes it does depending on the climate that you're in, please feel free to use a regular household paper towel, nothing on it dry, and just literally work it off your blank the way I'm doing here. If it's sticking, see how it comes right off? If it's really sticking, you wanna use some antibacterial, um, 
on your paper towel. You could use some Windex. Let's see if I have some spray here. I do. So I'm using spray away glass cleaner because I was cleaning pool today. Um, a little bit on my paper towel. It's not going to do anything. I wouldn't use harsh chemicals on your metals, but definitely a glass cleaner will do the trick. Um, or if you have a little bit of rubbing alcohol, that will work also. And it's just going to take the stickiness off your blank. This time of the year, it's really, um, it's, it's weird down here because I, I'm on the first floor, but I don't like to put the central air on. <laughs> I'm one of those people. I don't like to be cold. So I like to be just right. So it gets a little, gets a little sticky down here. So that's why sometimes the, um, the sticker will stick to my metal. So I'm just going to then take my buffing block again, and just a little bit of patience and see that will all come off your blank. So, so it'll be nice. Oh, and while you're polishing and showing people that shine, uh, we'll like to welcome CB says she's, or they're waiting for their new um, supplies to come. So they're just prepping so they can stamp once they come in the mail. And then Stacy Johnson says her first run of stamping was hilarious. She's glad she used a cheap practice blank um, and prep for her actual design. <laughs> well, you know what? Like I say, if you really have to learn your tools, this is not something that you could pick up really quick and master all at once. It definitely takes, you know, um, there's a learning curve to it. All right. So now sometimes you'll find that when you're stamping with your sticker, maybe the detail on the inside of some of your stamps, you didn't hit it hard enough. So I definitely did not hit my bullseye hard enough. So if you didn't do that and you feel confident that you could get it back into the impression, all right, which I feel pretty confident that I can, how you would do that is you definitely want to tape your blank down, okay? You're gonna take your stamp, lightly drag it over and you will feel it sink right back into that impression. And once you feel that it's in that impression, give it nice whack, all right? So you can see the difference here where I went back over and I didn't get my center in my bullseyes, all right? So I'm gonna come right back around. I'm gonna make sure that it sits right back in that impression. So Rita, as you're stamping, Leah commented, do you have to resharpen your stamps ever? No. If you're using your stamps correctly and you aren't using, so these, the coded stamps are not signature, okay? They are not rated for stainless, okay? So as long as you're using your stamps on brass, copper, aluminum, pewter, alchemy, uh, sterling silver, 14, 18 karat gold, you will be fine. You will not need to do anything to your stamps. All right. So I'm gonna come back in again and just give it a nice polish. Remember when you're polishing to get your sides all right, does everybody see that? Look how pretty that looks. All right, and I'm gonna come in now and I'm just gonna move it around, see how I like it. I kind of want my pattern. Mm, right there, all right? So I'm gonna come in and I'm going to place my first dot where I want my jump ring at the top. We're also hanging something off the bottom. So you wanna come straight down. Okay, so now you would measure that. Please take a ruler to it. I'm eyeballing it for you guys today, but definitely take 
um, take a few minutes and really find your center of that. You could also do that, mark your holes with your sticker guide on if you feel more comfortable because you feel like you need a template. Now I'm gonna come back in. <clears throat> I'm gonna use my screw hole, my screw hole down, my hole, ah, my screw down hole punch to pierce my holes. You definitely do not want to use your handheld hole punch. Okay, I know those are for sale at Michael's, but those are for thinner gauge metals. The screw down hole punch is available for thicker gauges. And that's exactly what these are. These are premium, um, premium blanks. You want to make sure that you're using the proper tool. Because if you take a hand hole punch to this, it's going to break your tool. All right, it's going to snap it. So definitely when you're working with thicker gauges, you want to use the screw down hole punch. So what I do with that is I feed my blank through. I line up my punch to where I marked my hole. If everybody could see that. And then I'm going to take it and punch through my disc. You will feel that it pierced the disc. And you could also see that it pierced the disc in there. After your disc is pierced, I would not keep on, you know, screwing it into it. Once it's pierced, you want to unscrew, okay? Hold your blank in your fingers and pop that out. By doing that, you're not gonna get any puckering on the back or the front of your blank. I'm gonna do the same to this hole right here, feed it right through, line up my center punch with the dot. Okay, come in, hold my metal. My, my punch is through my metal. I'm holding on to my blank and I'm unscrewing. So now I have my two holes. If you marked your blank with a Sharpie and you can't get the Sharpie off, keep in mind that Sharpie takes off Sharpie. All right. There we go. See that? Same thing with enamel. If you let your enamel dry, use your enamel to wet the dried enamel and it will pull it right off. All right, so there we go. That's our first disc. Now I'm gonna come in with my green. Some people think it looks blue, so we'll just call it blue green. Patina pen and we are going to, it's the same enamel formula as your black enamel. I'm gonna come in and I'm going to cover my impressions. Now with the blue green, blue green marker, the green marker, you might want to do more than one coat and I will show you what I mean. Depending on where you are, you know when I'm in California, I don't have an issue with my marker, but here in New York, sometimes I have to give a second coat. So I make sure that I really just run that marker over all of my impressions. And you see the more you layer on it, the bluer, greener it will become. All right, so here we go. And I'm just gonna set that aside for a few minutes. Um, I'm actually going to follow through and let it dry in one to three minutes. Usually if you've taken a class with me, I'm, I try to take it off right away. Um, with the blue, don't do that. Let it dry a little bit. Once you feel that it is dry, what I want you to do with this enamel is I want you to take your paper towel, bend it over, make a cone with it, okay? And I like to use that as kind of an eraser. So now I come in on my blank and I'm lightly in a circular motion, just literally removing some of the enamel, all right? And while I'm removing certain areas, you'll see that your blue and your green marker, even if you're using your gold and your silver or your silver, 
it's just allowing it to dry a little bit more inside, but not allowing it to dry on the metal. So I'm just gonna keep on working my way around. All right, and by that time, you're pretty much dry, all right? Once you feel that you're dry, then you're gonna take your paper towel, blot it again, and then lightly wipe. So you're gonna see the difference between lightly wiping and kind of erasing some of the enamel on there. Does everybody see the difference, how cloudy that is and then how shiny that is? So then you know that your enamel is drying your impression and you're not gonna be wiping it out. And you're just gonna go over your entire blank, lightly wiping any enamel that's on that surface away. Okay, and that's how pretty that blue green marker is. You could come back in again. Like I said, I wanna give it two coats. So I'm basically gonna do the same thing and you could see that it does get darker the more coats you put on. Let it try a little bit. And then I'm gonna come in again, this time dabbing it and lightly wiping. I'm dabbing, lightly wiping. Oh, I love it. And your marker will get a yeah, deeper green tone. What? You can definitely see the difference with that second coat. Right, look at yeah. that. All right, and then you could take, I would let it dry a little bit and then take your, buffing block and just give it a really nice shine. And it will not take the enamel out. If the enamel is dry, will not take it out. Look how pretty that is in that mirror finish. And before, remember, we started with a blank that looked like this, okay? Because there was a little bit of oxidation on it. And now look at that, gorgeous. All right, so we're gonna work on our second. Again, we're gonna pull out the sticker guide. We're going to follow the circumference. And I believe it is the one, two, three, the third circle from the center that's going to fit this next blank. If you're having problems getting it on there, remember, just press from the center and then pull it out with your other finger. All right, that's behind it. There we go. I'm gonna place that down. I have my center. Now, if you didn't like piercing your holes because you had to line it up and use a, um, use a ruler, definitely utilize your lines on your grid. So before we do anything, I'm going to mark where my top hole is going to go and another on the bottom because I am going to use a head pin and hang a bead from it. Okay. Now I'm going to start my pattern from the center. Again, we're going to come in and I'm going to do this a little bit differently this time. I'm going to utilize my center line and I'm gonna use, I'm gonna draw a cross in the center. And that's how I'm gonna start with my pattern. But instead of using my bullseye in the center, I'm gonna come in and use my flourish. All right, so I'm going to line up my center and I'm gonna put a dot right in the center, all right? And all of my flourishes are gonna meet up creating a flower in the center. I'm gonna place it down. Take my hammer. So I'm right on that line. My point of my flourish is right on that dot. I'm turning it around, I'm doing the same. So 
So now I have a really nice flourish in the center of that disc, okay? And then I'm gonna come in with my bullseye right between my petals. So I'm gonna come in here on the inside of the first black circle, okay? I'm gonna drop a dot. And I'm gonna come in with it. So now I have my flourish in the center, my shaman's eye, my bullseye dot <laughs> um, in between my flourishes, okay? Then I'm just gonna come out and I'm gonna do my stepped out pattern. I'm gonna bring my step out pattern right between my, let's see, one, my second circle and my first circle, okay? right on my orange hash marks. So second circle out, in between the second circle and that first circle, you're gonna place a dot. I'm gonna come in with my step pattern. All right, then I'm gonna come in one more time with my sun rays and the last circle. So that's one, two, in between the third and the second, okay, on that grid, I'm just gonna come in with my eyelash stamp right in between and give it a really nice pattern. And just finish that off. All right, then I am going to take my blank and my sticker off my box. There we go. Now I'm not gonna pull my sticker off my blank. I'm gonna come in and I can just fold this over and I'm going to use my markings where I want my, my holes punched, okay? And you could definitely punch it right through the sticker guide. So if you don't wanna line up and you wanna you know, mark your holes, you could do that utilizing the lines on your sticker guide. Again, gonna pierce, very simple. Hey, Rita. Yes. We have a great question by Julie um, and Lindsay agrees. Are there pattern books or templates available? Um, there are not pattern books available, not yet. But yeah, but I think we're working on them for the future. Yes. Um, so right now the stamp guide book um, comes with the circle guides, the straight guides, and our clear pattern stickers to make your own pattern, but we are working on uh, templated guides in the future. Also, in your mandala packs, your new, I know it, we started with the last two that came out. There is a pullout 
um, with inspiration pattern, with patterns for inspiration. All right. So um, if you purchased one of the new mandala packs, um, we've been including a little pullout with some inspiration. All right. So I'm just pulling out my stickers and my impressions very lightly. I'm not being aggressive with it. They literally come right out. Now, if your enamel is not staying in your impression, guys, one, your impressions were not stamped deep enough, or two, you still have that plastic sticker inside of them. So definitely it's important that you get that out. All right, take the paper towel and just go over it. Get that stickiness off. And I'm going to come in with my buffing block. Running it up and down in the same direction. There we go. And then we're going to come in with our enamel again. I'm going to cover all of our stamped impressions. Not rushing you, but just wanted to give you a warning that we have like 10 minutes left. In the Ooh, class. Okay. I see. Thank you, Jen. You're welcome. All right. So I showed you how to put two coats on. And because we're in a little bit of a time crunch, we're just going to put one coat on. All right. For my bottom. Again, you're going to come in, use your eraser, lightly blot, and then lightly wipe. Once you feel that it's dry, you're gonna come in, blot it a little bit more, and then give it a nice light wiping. And then come back in and polish that up a little bit more. So here are our stamped discs, all right? And you're gonna take two chain nose pliers, and a round nose plier. And I am going to pull out a bead that I picked up my Michaels and slide that right on a copper head pin from Michaels. I'm gonna come in towards the bottom, make a loop. Now, I am a metal stamper. I'm not a metal uh, wrapper, <laughs> wire wrapper. Um, for better tutorials and better class on how to twist wire, definitely check out um, Meredith's class from Beetleon, um, either Meredith or Wyatt. Take a class with them. They are phenomenal. They are the gurus of wrapping wire, okay? I literally just get by. <laughs> so here is my bead. I'm gonna take out two jump rings. There we go. And you can find these at your local Michaels as well. 
You're gonna make sure that when you're opening your jump rings, you're using two chain nose pliers. That's very important. And when you open them, you're going to laterally twist to open. You never wanna pull apart because it, it um, compromises the metal in the center of your jump ring. So we're going to slide our first disc on. And we're gonna put our second on. So we're connecting it right in the center, making sure to laterally twist it closed. So we have these two connecting. Then we're gonna come in with our top jump ring. Close that up. Need one more jump ring for the bottom. And hang your dangle right from that center hole that we made. And there, my friends, is your stamped pendant. You could see that. And then I'm gonna come in with some deerskin leather cord, also available at your local Michaels. I'm gonna cut it to any, you know, to the length that I desire. I like to wear these relatively longer. Put that right through. And there you go. All right, guys, any questions? Any questions? Uh, no, they love the necklace. Uh, so there is very little to no marring on the back. Yeah. You can take your buffing block and polish that up. Polishing the back of your length will give it a little bit of shine. If that marring is bothering you, you can take a uh, sanding block to your back, sand to give it a nice matte finish, and it will um, cover up some of the marring. Um, CB, I don't like to clear coat for the simple fact that I like it when it gets a little discolored. You could always polish your disc back up. Once you put a clear coat on it, if that clear coat does crack, You'd have to sand down your entire piece or, you know, maybe not be able to wear it anymore. Once clear coat cracks, it's very hard to get, um, to get it to polish back up. All right. So I love raw metals because once it does tarnish, I can take my block and buff it right back up. And let's, so this is a tarnished bracelet blank. Um, that I was working on because I want to solder something in the middle. But you see how tarnished that is? Feel free to take your buffing block and literally just rub it. Look at that polish now. Look how it polishes right back up. So I am a firm believer in using jeweler's brass, jeweler's copper, because even though it might oxidize and change, it's really going to shine up really pretty. It's not plated. So you'll always be able to get that shine again. All right. Rita, we had a question from Shirley. She wants to know, um, how do you knock the cord in the back to finish that necklace? Oh, okay. Do? So you could do, do we have time? Yeah. Okay. So you could do one of two things. I'm going to just clear this out of the way. You can either match your ends together Okay, and tie one knot like this, okay, and tighter. Or you could come in and do a slip knot. I'm gonna try to do this in the time we have left. And obviously I didn't cut my cord too long, but you're going to take your cord, cross it over, okay? And you're gonna tie your cord 
onto your other cord. So you're going to have that crossover, come around, make a knot. So you're basically tying one cord onto the other. There's one knot. And then you're gonna come around. Same thing. You're going to tie your, your cord onto your other cord. And that's gonna leave you with a slip knot. All right, and you guys could definitely watch the replay of this. All right, what's nice about the slip knot and your ends, if you have leather like holes, um, beads with bigger holes, definitely slide on a nice pretty bead and tie another knot at the end. So it gives it a really nice finished look. Or you could leave them just like this. And then take your flush cutters or a nice pair of scissors and just cut your ends a little shorter. All right, so you have that slip knot. Sliding knots, Lindsay, are fun, but you know, sometimes showing them, um, <laughs> I always like to teach knots in person <laughs> Same. rather than <laughs> over the computer. All right. So I'm going to turn this around. Brady, you got me nervous. I didn't think you were going to finish it, but you imagine you do it every single time. Every I know time. because I talk too much. <laughs> I need to have like an hour and 15 minutes <laughs> or two hours. That would be even better. Well, that's what our Facebook lives are for in the Facebook group. I know. And everyone who's watched the Facebook live know that I just like to talk and talk and talk. So thank you. laughing at you. <laughs> thank you guys so much for joining me, Jen and Joanne today. Um, I did get some sun. I have a lot of weeding to do. A lot of weeding as I'm staring out, a lot of weeding to do. So I have to put some sunblock on the next time I go outside. But Now's the moment that you could turn your cameras on so we could see if you stand with us or you just want to say hi, you could wave because we can't hear you, but we could see you. So I'm going to scroll through. Hi, Brent is still working. Angela came Linda. back, Linda came back, Anita. Hi, back. Well, well, Linda, you're at the beach. <laughs> I'm jealous. Jennifer is fun background. Martha, let's see. Oh, Holly. Anita, hello. Hi, Jennifer Wolf. See, I like this part because I always say hi to you guys, but I never put a face to the name. So this is great. I love this. Look how beautiful all you ladies are. Hi, Marie. Let's see, Julie. Well, thank you guys for joining. Um, like I said, we appreciate you guys hanging out with us. Um, we wish we could do it more often. Um, if you haven't joined that Facebook group, please do so. Um, we are a wealth of amazingly creative individuals. Um, and I'm blown away by some, uh, well, most all of the pieces that you guys have been sharing in that group. So that group is a great outlet. If maybe you're stuck on a design or you have a question about something, or I might've said something and then you wanna go back to it and ask me a question or Jenna question or Joanne, that's what that group is for. So I hope you ladies and gentlemen have a wonderful weekend. And Jen, when is our next class, do you know? I'm pretty sure it's June 24th. I don't see it listed. So I will be reaching out to Michael's to find out where it is. All um, right, so we're June scheduled, 24th. Yeah, we're scheduled till July. Um, and then oh, good. Have, and then and then we have we'll like schedule new, some more. Yes, we have new product coming out to Michael's. So we're excited. All right. So if you guys want to hang out with us some more, like me and Jen were talking about and Joanne before, please hop over to our Facebook page. Please hop over to um, and watch our Facebook lives. Um, those are Tuesday at 1230. So thanks so much for joining us, guys. Have a good weekend. Bye. Bye.